வணக்கம் ஹூ சேஸ் யூ கேனாட் லேர்ன் வைல் ஹேவிங் ஃபன் வெல்கம் டு த கிரேட் டான்பேப் ஸ்குவிஸ் த இன்ஃபர்டெயின்மெண்ட் ப்ரோக்ராம் இன் த ரன் அப் டு தி ஆன்வல் கான்ஃபரன்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி தமிழ்நாடு அண்ட் பாண்டிச்சேரி அசோசியேஷன் ஆஃப் பிளாஸ்டிக் சர்ஜன்ஸ் டு பி ஹெல்ட் ஃப்ரம் ஃபெப்ரவரி நைன் டு லெவன் டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபோர் Question number 1 The following is a part of the facial fat pad Galial fat pad deep temporal fat pad buccal fat pads post septal fat pads of the eyelids The correct answer is galial fat pad The facial fat pads are localized collection of fat present deep to the superficial layer of the fascia. They are separate anatomically and histologically from the subcutaneous fat which is present between the skin and the superficial layer of fascia. The facial fat pads include the superficial temporal fat pad, the galial fat pad, the suborbicularis oculi fat pad (SOOF) the retro orbicularis oculi fat pad ROOF and the preseptal fat pads of the eyelids the other fat pads that are present are the deep temporal fat pads the buccal fat pads and the postseptal fat pads of the eyelids which are deep to the deep fascia question number 2 according to the mathes and nahai classification the latissimus dorsi muscle is type 1 muscle type 3 muscle type 5 muscle or type 7 muscle the correct answer is type 5 muscle the mathes and nahai classification was first described in 1981 according to this muscles are grouped based on the number of pedicles available type 1 muscle has a single vascular pedicle and an example is the tensor fascia lata muscle type 2 muscle flap has one dominant pedicle and many minor pedicles an example is the gracilis muscle type 3 muscle contains two dominant pedicles and a classic example is the gluteus maximus muscle type 4 muscle contains segmental pedicles only and an example is the sartorius muscle type 5 muscle contains one dominant pedicle and secondary segmental pedicles an example is the latissimus dorsi muscle question number 3 the superolateral dermoglandular pedicle in reduction mammoplasty was described by mckissock skoog pitangi or strombeck The correct answer is Coog. Different surgeons have innovated different techniques based on the position of the pedicle. Strombeck described the horizontal bipedicle flap in 1960. Skoog described the superolateral dermoglandular pedicle in 1963. Mekisak described the vertical bipedicle technique in 1972. Pitangi and Weiner described the superiorly based dermoglandular pedicle in 1973 orlando and guthri described the superomedial dermoglandular pedicle in 1975 and curtis goldwin and georgiard described the inferior pedicle in 1977 question number 4 notching in the area of the soft triangle of the nose is a distinct feature of number 0 tessier cleft number 1 tessier cleft number 2 tessier cleft or the number 3 tessier cleft and the correct answer is number 1 tessier cleft the soft tissue involvement in tessier cleft number 1 is very similar to the common cleft lip it passes through the cupid's bow and alar cartilage dome notching in the area of the soft triangle of nose is very characteristic the nasal tip and nasal septum 
deviate away from the cleft with cranial extension as a number 13 cleft vertical dystopia is present in skeletal involvement the anterior incisors face toward the cleft creating anterior open bite if there is an alveolar cleft present it is between the central and lateral incisors it may extend posteriorly as a complete cleft of the hard and soft palates the cephalad extension is through the junction of the nasal bone and frontal process of the maxilla question number 5 the first successful replantation of arm was by komatsu and tamai jacobson and suarez mclean and bunky or malt and mccon And the correct answer is Malt and Mekon. In 1962, Malt and Mekon performed the first replantation of a completely severed arm in Boston. In 1963, Chen performed the replantation of a completely amputated hand in Shanghai. In 1965, Komatsu and Susumu Tamai performed the replantation of a completely severed thumb in Japan. However, Malt and Mekon published the story of their replantation in 1964, but Chen had published the story of his replantation in 1963. Ronald A. Malt was chief resident at 31 years of age. He went on to become chief of gastroenterology at Massachusetts General Hospital in 1970 and professor of surgery at Harvard Medical School in 1975. Everett Knowles was the boy who got his hand back. He was a 12-year-old boy who had slipped while hitchhiking on a freight train. Question number 6. Dr. Karl Hartranf performed the first tram flap for breast reconstruction in 1950, 1960, 1970 or 1980. The correct answer is 1980. It was in 1980 that Dr. Karl Hartranf performed the first tram flap for breast reconstruction. He described it as a procedure in which tissues that would normally be discarded during an abdominal lipectomy were instead transferred to a mastectomy defect based on the proximal rectus abdominis muscle and the superior epigastric vessels contained within it. Question number 7. The only signaling molecule capable of singly inducing de novo bone formation is BMP, transforming growth factor beta, fibroblast growth factor or platelet derived growth factor. The answer is bone morphogenetic protein bmp the four main factors that help in bone healing after fractures are the bone morphogenetic protein bmp transforming growth factor beta fibroblast growth factor and the platelet derived growth factor of these only the bone morphogenetic protein has the potential to form ectopic bone or de novo bone the effect of all these factors on endochondral ossification and membranous ossification decrease from the top of the table to the bottom of the table. Question number 8. The following forms a part of the fixed unit of the hand. Index finger metacarpal or ring finger metacarpal or thumb metacarpal or the little finger metacarpal. The answer is the index finger metacarpal or the second metacarpal. The fixed unit of the hand consists of the distal carpal row, the second metacarpal bone and the third metacarpal bone. Question number 9. The platysma smas plication lift is characterized by inverted L incision, 
predominantly vertical vector it does not include malar augmentation it involves dissection into the neck of all these features it is only involving dissection into the neck that characterizes the platysmus mass plication lift there are many differences between the platysma smas plication lift or the psp lift and the minimal axis cranial suspension lift or the max lift these differences are with reference to the incision to the dissection into the neck the type of platysma plasty that is done the type of smas fixation that is done the malar augmentation the vector of pull the skin excision and surgery in the neck the psp lift involves a vertical temporal incision with or without a post auricular extension dissection into the neck a direct platysmoplasty smas to smas fixation malar augmentation and the direction of pull or the vector is cephalo posterior skin excision is tailored and suturing done with no tension and multiple procedures can be done in the neck in the max lift there is an inverted l incision there is no dissection into the neck indirect platysma plasty is done and smas fixation is done to the deep temporal fascia there is no malar augmentation involved and the vector is mostly vertical skin excision is tailored and suturing done under high tension and the neck procedure is mainly liposuction the first surgical procedure described specifically to treat upper extremity lymphedema was most probably condolion operation charles procedure sistrunk operation or homans procedure the correct answer is the sistrunk operation the first reported surgical procedure for lymphedema was published in 1912 by charles who described a procedure for scrotal lymphedema and its application to lower limb lymphedema similarly the first surgical procedure described specifically to treat upper extremity lymphedema was probably the sistrunk operation reported in 1927 I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please register for the TANPAPS 2024 conference, a wonderful scientific and academic feast where many innovative and interesting sessions are being planned. Do visit the website to see the details and to register. Vanakkam.